Going My Way, a classic film from 1944, takes you on a journey through the world of a young priest bringing his unconventional methods to a struggling parish. The story unfolds with a mix of humor, shock, and sorrow, making it a roller coaster of emotions. Have you ever wondered about lesser known facts or anecdotes related to this film? When did you first experience the charm of Going My Way? As we delve into this cinematic gem, be prepared for surprising trivia and personal insights that might change the way you see the movie. The journey is packed with funny, shocking, and poignant moments, so keep your eyes peeled for the unexpected. Have you ever shared a cherished memory or personal experience tied to this classic? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Get ready for a trip down memory lane as we explore the captivating world of Going My Way together. Are you intrigued? Stay tuned for more interesting revelations about this timeless film. Share your thoughts and memories with us. Your perspective is valued. In the heart of 1944, the silver screen bore witness to the emergence of a cinematic gem that would etch itself into the annals of classic films. Picture this a quaint theater, the flicker of black and white images on the big screen, and a captivated audience transported to a bygone era. Such was the experience of those who witnessed the timeless tale unfold in this captivating production. Set against the backdrop of wartime America, the film stands as a poignant testament to the resilience of the human spirit during challenging times. Directed by the visionary Leo McCary, the narrative weaves a compelling story of a young and unconventional priest, played by the incomparable Bing Crosby. As he steps into the bustling world of a struggling parish, he brings with him a fresh perspective and a song in his heart, creating a unique harmony that resonates far beyond the church walls. Released during a pivotal period in history, this cinematic masterpiece mirrors the collective sentiment of a nation grappling with both sacrifice and hope. Its significance lies not just in its cinematic brilliance, but also in its ability to mirror the pulse of an era defined by unwavering faith, camaraderie, and the pursuit of dreams against all odds. The film, with its engaging narrative and timeless melodies, struck a chord with audiences of its time, offering a momentary escape from the harsh realities of the world. Bing Crosby's charismatic portrayal and the melodic backdrop of the era's music contribute to the enduring allure of this production. In conclusion, this masterpiece transcends its temporal confines, leaving an indelible mark on the hearts of viewers who have had the privilege of experiencing its magic. It remains not just a film, but a journey through a pivotal era guided by the unwavering spirit of its characters and the enduring power of hope a testament to the artistry of storytelling that resonates across generations. In 1944, Rissa Stevens portrayed Genevieve Linden in the film, taking on the lead role in Carmen at the Metropolitan Opera. It's worth noting that she didn't make her debut in this role until December 28, 1945, a year after the movie's release. Jean Heather, cast as a young aspiring singer secretly married to Jean Lockhart's son, was on the brink of stardom under Paramount's grooming. She featured as Barbara Stanwyck's stepdaughter in another 1944 Paramount hit, Double Indemnity. Unfortunately, Heather's promising movie career was abruptly cut short by a severe auto accident that resulted in serious head injuries. She completed only 10 films before this unfortunate incident. Bing Crosby, a prominent figure in the film, performed Swinging on a Star by Jimmy Van Heusen, a song that later won an Academy Award for Best Song. This marked one of four different Oscar-winning songs Crosby sang in his films. In summary, the film, featuring Rissa Stevens, Gene Heather, and Bing Crosby, holds historical significance with its portrayal of the opera world and the success of its Academy Award-winning song. Rissa Stevens' later Metropolitan Opera debut adds an interesting layer to her involvement in the movie. Gene Heather's career was tragically cut short, and Bing Crosby's rendition of Swinging on a Star stands as a notable highlight in the film. Barry Fitzgerald clinched his Soul Academy Award nomination, securing the Best Supporting Actor Oscar for his dual roles in the film. Notably, this recognition remains his only brush with the prestigious awards. The film's triumph at the box office owed much to its soundtrack, featuring the chart-topping song Swinging on a Star. Sung by Bing Crosby, the tune became one of the highlights of Crosby's extensive recording career, adding to the movie's success. Director Leo McCary etched his name in history by becoming the first individual to bag Academy Awards for both directing and writing for a single film. His dual win solidified his status as a groundbreaking figure in the industry. 
In summary, Going My Way left an indelible mark with Barry Fitzgerald's unique nomination, the film's soundtrack contributing to its box office triumph, and Leo McCary's historic Dual Academy Award wins for directing and writing. A noteworthy cinematic achievement indeed. Barry Fitzgerald, despite portraying a Catholic priest in the film, was, in reality, a Protestant. Interestingly, his portrayal of crossing himself in the movie wasn't aligned with Catholic tradition. On several occasions, he mistakenly went from right to left instead of the customary left to right. The film's first public showing on April 27, 1944, had a unique premiere reaching 65 military locations spanning from Alaska to Italy and from England to the jungles of Burma, primarily in Europe. Father Fitzgibbons, played by Barry Fitzgerald, claims to have been a priest for 45 years in the film. However, considering Fitzgerald's actual age during filming, this would imply he entered the priesthood at the age of 11. Barry Fitzgerald at the time was only 56 years old. These intriguing facts add layers to the film, providing a glimpse into the actor's background and the unique circumstances surrounding the movie's premiere. A Protestant portraying a Catholic priest and the unconventional screening locations contribute to the distinctiveness of the film's history. Barry Fitzgerald made history with a unique Academy Award nomination for both Best Actor and Best Supporting Actor for his role in the film, a distinction unparalleled in Oscar history. Winning in the supporting category, Fitzgerald lost the lead category to co-star Bing Crosby. Notably, wartime constraints led to Fitzgerald receiving a plaster Oscar instead of the customary gold-plated Britannium one. A few weeks after his victory, he inadvertently broke the head off his plaster Oscar while practicing his golf swing. Going My Way became the inaugural Best Picture Oscar winner to have a genuine sequel. The film's financial success was remarkable, earning a substantial $16.3 million on its initial run, a significant sum for its time. These achievements solidify the film's unique place in cinematic history. In summary, Barry Fitzgerald's unprecedented dual Oscar nominations, the film's groundbreaking status as the first Best Picture winner with a true sequel, and its substantial box office earnings mark Going My Way as a distinctive and influential work in film history. Going My Way, a groundbreaking film in cinema history, achieved a remarkable feat by clinching the Best Picture honors at both the Academy Awards and the Golden Globe Awards an unprecedented accomplishment. The movie faced bans in several Latin American countries due to a seemingly trivial yet impactful detail Bing Crosby portraying a priest wore a white shirt. This simple choice stirred controversy and led to the film's restriction in certain regions. Adding another layer to its uniqueness, Going My Way secured a place in Oscar history by being the first film to have two actors receive Academy Awards for their performances. Bing Crosby's portrayal earned him the Best Actor title, while Barry Fitzgerald, in an equally noteworthy performance, took home the Best Supporting Actor award. This historic dual win set a precedent in the annals of cinema, showcasing the exceptional contributions of both lead and supporting actors in a single film. In conclusion, Going My Way stands as a trailblazer, not only for its dual Best Picture triumphs, but also for overcoming bands and paving the way for dual actor recognition at prestigious awards. A film that broke barriers and made history, showcasing the power of simplicity in storytelling. Going My Way, the top-grossing film of 1944, paved the way for a sequel in 1945 titled The Bells of St. Mary's. This subsequent film, surpassing its predecessor's success, held the title of the highest grossing film in 1945. Interestingly, Going My Way and The Bells of St. Mary's were released by different studios Paramount and RKO Radio, respectively. Both movies were skillfully directed by Leo McCary. Filmed at St. Monica Catholic Church in Santa Monica, California, the movie's setting played a crucial role in shaping the character of Barry Fitzgerald. Drawing inspiration from the real pastor, MSGNR, Nicholas Keneally, Fitzgerald's character was influenced by the nuances of the church's irascible leader. Additionally, the film brings an unexpected connection to the world of sports. The St. Louis Browns, featured in the storyline, later transformed into the Baltimore Orioles. Originating in Milwaukee as the Brewers, this franchise holds a significant place as one of the eight original charter teams in the American League. 
In summary, Going My Way is triumph at the box office, its successful sequel, Leo McCary's dual direction of the two films, the unique filming location, and the subtle sports connection add layers to its cinematic legacy.